Hello everyone, welcome back. Let us continue our discussion on code calibration and today our topic is optimal safety factors. In the previous uh, class, we discussed how to derive at different safety factors that we um, often use as design criteria. Now, the problem can be actually uh, addressed from two different perspectives. In the first case, if we have the limit state defined along with the associated random variables and those random variables are defined by their statistics, then we can solve the forward problem. For example, we adopt level 2 reliability method uh, using Hassoffer Linear Reliability Index, then we can actually verify what is the level of reliability for that given set of partial safety factors. Now, in that case, our outcome of the design process is the reliability index or the probability of failure. Now, in reality, we actually uh, solve a reverse problem where we first set a certain uh, reliability level or probability of failure level and for that, we uh, need to find out the factors so that we can design based on those partial safety factors. Then automatically we achieve a certain target reliability level. Now, in that process, again, we have two major parameters to deal with. One is associated with strength, another is associated with the uh, load effects. Now, the normal design philosophy states that we always underestimate load, sorry, underestimate strength and overestimate the load effect. So, that's what uh, we have always in the uh, safety criteria. So, we have factored resistance, which should be always more than the effect of the factored loads. Now, because we always overestimate loads, the factors associated with the loads are always more than one. Similarly, we always underestimate the resistance. So, the factor associated with the resistance, they have to be actually less than one. Now, In this process, we uh, again uh, solve the limit state based on uh, the given uh, codal provisions and for that we have different safety checking formats. For example, we have NBC format. In this format, again, we have the design guideline is given as you can see on your screen. So, on the left hand side, again, we have the factored resistance. So, in this case, gamma R is the resistance factor. And then that we multiply with the nominal resistance. So, Rn where subscript N stands for nominal resistance and that should be greater than the complete load effect which is given in the right hand side. Now, in this case, this Ks, it refers to the function that converts the loads to load effect. So, we start with the loads and then we find out the moment we apply those loads on the structure, what will be the impact on the structure and that's what is reflected here. Now, in this format, you can see we have uh, the dead load which is separated out from all other loads. So, we consider nominal dead load and then multiply that with a factor uh, gamma d and then obviously all other loads are combined in this function psi. And within that, we have the nominal loads. For example, we have live load, wind load, earthquake load, along with their appropriate um, load factors. So, in this case, gamma L, gamma W, gamma E, these are the load factors. And that if we multiply uh, with the nominal loads, we get the combined load effect. So, that's combined in this psi function and then it is added with the dead load effect. And then finally, Again, it is passed through this Ks function to estimate the ultimate load effect. And that load effect should always be less than the uh, resistance, factored resistance. Similarly, we have other formats, for example, CEB format. So, in this case, we have uh, this resistance on the left hand side. But if you notice that in this case, this gamma m1, gamma m2, gamma m3, they are all in uh, denominator. So, obviously, in this format, uh, this gamma m i, that should be more than 1, so that ultimately 1 by these factors should be less than 1 and that is how it again reduces the 
strength of the structure and this factored strength again should be greater than the load effects now this gamma mi on the left hand side it actually takes care of different uh, variations in the strength which may be an occasional variation may be difference between the control specimen and the original structure normally when we construct a structure we take the uh, uh, control specimen and then test on those control specimen so there may be a variation from the control specimen to the actual structure so that is taken care in this format and then obviously there can be inherent weakness and also modeling error among many others so all these are actually taken care by this uh, factors on the left hand side then uh, obviously uh, uh, qk this is the characteristic uh, load and obviously fk is the characteristic strength so in this format again you can see all these characteristic loads are combined on the right hand side under the function gs so then there is a eccm uh, european code committee format so in this format uh, left hand side remains same however in the right hand side you can easily notice that first the dead load effect is separated out from all other loads and then obviously we consider mean dead load in this design format that is multiplied with the associated factor and then we have gamma q that is the combined factor for all the time varying loads out of that if you carefully notice this qk1 this is the dominant time varying load so dominant time varying loads are separated out from all other time varying loads which are combined here in this uh, summation and then ultimately all of them are multiplied by this gamma q and added with the dead load effect similarly we have uh, other formats also uh, one of the most popular format is lrfd format load resistance factor design format it was first proposed by illingwood in his paper published in ac journal of structural engineering so those who are interested you can refer to this paper so in this format there are four uh, equations so the first equation you can see on your screen it is gamma r times rn so we consider the nominal resistance multiplied by the associated factor and that should be greater than the mean dead load effect and mean lifetime maximum live load effect so that's what in the first equation and similarly we have other equations in this format obviously uh, we consider mean dead load effect and then uh, all other uh, load combinations we consider and then we consider lifetime maximums of uh, live load wind load snow load or similar uh, loads and then we apply in this safety checking format now uh, if we consider an example so let us see how we can apply this and uh, find out the partial safety factors for a target reliability level so in the first example uh, we consider the doubly reinforced beam so it's a simply supported beam having uh, tension and compression steel as you can see in this uh, uh, diagram so the width of the beam is b and the depth of the beam is small d this is the effective depth and in this case we use m20 concrete that is the nominal mix and then fe415 grade of steel and we determine partial safety factors for a dead load plus live load when we have ln by dn in this case 1 and the target reliability level is 4.5 now we have uh, three random variables in this case uh, x1 x2 x3 and uh, the description of the random variables also given you can see on your screen first two following normal distribution and the last one is type 1 largest and we use uh, lrfd safety checking format and then the limit state equation is r minus d minus l equal to 0 and then uh, we can uh, modify this equation just by uh, using uh, the nominal values of resistance dead load and live load and then ultimately we get this expression and then finally uh, we introduce this ln by dn as a3 and then we can modify this uh, limit state equation in this ultimate format so in this format we have x1 x2 x3 and the dead load uh, nominal dead load and nominal resistance and along with a factor a3 now 
Once we have that, because this is a linear equation, then in that case, we can use Cornell's definition. So we find out mu g and sigma g. Uh, mu g, uh, we get by putting the mean value of x1, x2, x3 in this uh, gx. And then similarly, we can also find out sigma g, which you can see in the denominator of this expression. So using these two expression, we can find out what is beta. Actually, in the forward problem, we use the statistics of uh, uh, these uh, uh, random variables and then we estimate beta but in this case our beta is given which is 4.5 so we'll use that value now let us start our uh, design so uh, let us consider the design point as the mean uh, so we start with the mean values so for x1 the mean value is 1.17 for x2 it is 1.05 and for x3 because it is a non-normal random variable obviously in this case we use uh, equivalent mean uh, and that is 0 0.59. Similarly, also we estimate equivalent standard deviation for the third variable, which is 0 0.168. Then uh, in this expression, because the left hand side represents the target reliability, which is 4.5 in this case, then we can now solve for the only unknown in this case is actually the Rn. So uh, in this case, Rn we can represent in terms of dn and which is 3.004 times dn. Then once we do that, we can find out the direction cosines. Obviously, uh, these direction cosines will be in terms of this capital K and for all uh, other two, we can also find out. And then ultimately, we can use the uh, properties of direction cosine to find out capital K in terms of dn and which is in this case 0 0.417 times dn. Then uh, subsequently we can find out the direction cosines alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and in this case you can see the values of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. So alpha 1 is minus 0 0.878, alpha 2 is 0 0.252 and alpha 3 is 0 0.403. Now the moment we estimate alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 then we can find out the new design point in the original space that you know the conversion. So x1 star that is the new design point in the original space will be equal to mu1 plus alpha1 times beta times sigma1. And on the right hand side now because we know the value of alpha1 then we can completely solve and in this case our x1 star is 0 0.687. Similarly we can also find out x2 star and x3 star. And just remember because the third random variable is uh, non-normal and for that we use equivalent um, parameters of the normal distribution. That's the reason we have mu3 prime and sigma3 prime in the third equation and x3 prime uh, we can estimate based on these values of equivalent normal. Then again, uh, obviously, we have in this case uh, our uh, new design points are identified and then uh, we can repeat this criteria for uh, this Rn by Dn ratio in two successive iterations. And in this case, we use a stopping criteria of uh, 0 0.01 and repeat the procedure. And then what we get ultimately is the converged value of Rn by Dn, which is in this case 3.359. So for each values of Rn by Dn, you can see we start from 3.004 and as we progress, gradually we reach this converged value of 3.359. And for all this, uh, we also have identified the values of direction cosines, that is alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. And then uh, corresponding design point x1 star, x2 star, x3 star. Ultimately, uh, in the original space, the converged value of the design point you can see in the last column. So x1 star is 0.802, x2 star is 1.131 and x3 star is 1.553. Now once we do that, then we can actually find out the factors gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And in this case again, our gamma 1 is 0.082, then gamma 2 is 1.131 and then um, gamma 3 is 1.553. So the point to be noted here again you can see the factor associated with gamma r is less than 1 as obvious because we always underestimate strength and the load factors are always more than 1. And obviously uh, 
for dead load uh, we expect a lesser variation compared to live load and that's also what you can see from these values so uh, as expected we have a bigger variation of the live load and that's the reason we have a um, greater value of gamma l compared to gamma d then uh, these uh, partial safety factors are based on the nominal values but again we can identify the partial safety factors based on uh, other reference point for example we can use mean as our reference point then we get central partial safety factors obviously those factors will change slightly but ultimately the reliability level uh, will be always the target reliability level as in this case it is 4.5 so that's how we can actually identify these uh, partial safety factors and then uh, our design equation is basically in the LRFD format is gamma r times rn should be greater than gamma d times dn plus gamma l times ln so if we apply the partial safety factors then ultimately in this LRFD format we get this equation and again this is the equation we should use to check the design uh, to achieve a particular target reliability level so that's the main objective and then we can repeat this exercise for different values of ln by dn in this case the ratio of ln by dn is 1 so we can change this parameter and then for every case we can find out these factors gamma r gamma d and gamma l then obviously uh, we can also study that variation so our target reliability strength in this case is 4.5 and for that if we change the ratio of ln and dn then if we solve obviously we get the variation of uh, these partial safety factors and as you can see uh, this gamma r it is actually getting saturated as uh, uh, we increase this ln by dn and it is getting saturated to the value of 1 because we cannot go beyond the actual resistance of the structure because that is not permitted so it is going up to this its uh, uh, full uh, strength while other uh, partial safety factors if you look at both of them are actually mostly more than one except in this case so we can apply all these factors accordingly and to get a target reliability level as in this case it is 4.5 now the point to be noted out of this uh, plot is that we have three partial safety factors so out of that this blue dotted line that is corresponding to the live load is having maximum variation so this parameter is highly sensitive to this ratio as obvious however all other parameters after certain point is getting saturated so we can use a reference value when it is saturated and then uh, we can use that value and accordingly we can change this uh, live load factor because that's the factor which is ultimately affected by this variation of ln by dn now code calibration this entire process is aimed at determining a set of safety factors as you have seen that will ensure the best approximate uniform reliability over the design situations uh, so if we go back to the previous example we actually change the ln by dn ratio and that's how the design situations vary and then every case we get a set of partial safety factors obviously out of all this uh, our main aim uh, will be to get a constant set of factors uh, uh, for the associated reliability levels uh, in this case it is say beta naught but as we progress we'll see how we can address this uh, uh, and come to an optimal safety factor so that we can use that safety factors to achieve a certain uh, target reliability level so we'll do that in a minute and because for a large group of design situations we we can have different combinations of loads we can have different uh, time varying loads and for uh, their nominal values if you keep on changing then obviously we'll get always a different set of partial safety factors and then the natural question comes there how to arrive at a set of safety factors which will give me the best possible uh, outcome 
Now, for that what we do, we actually define a function S, which is a function of all these partial safety factors. It is actually a measure uh, of closeness between the target reliability and the reliability associated with the partial uh, set of factors. Uh, so, ideally speaking, we want to get an optimal set of this gamma i so that this function is minimized with respect to the target reliability level. So, what we have S of gamma i that is the function which we aim to minimize and that is how we will solve to get the partial safety factors. Now, in this process we have Rn2. This superscript 2 represents the strength, the nominal strength that we get from level 2 analysis for a target reliability level say beta naught. Then uh, obviously Rn2, this uh, nominal strength based on level 2 reliability analysis is a function of load ratio and load combinations. And then again we have Rn1 that is the nominal resistance corresponding to the design equation having a set of partial safety factors as per uh, level 1. So, this subscript actually represents the level of reliability analysis. So, we have in this case level 1 reliability analysis. And uh, we can find this gamma i which minimizes the functions. Obviously, for that, uh, we first take the difference between these two strength levels from level 1 and level 2 reliability analysis. And then we square it up, multiply that with a weight. This weight actually comes from uh, the designer. We can set different weights and then accordingly, we can arrive at the optimal partial uh, safety factors. So, ultimately, what we do for all possibilities, we actually optimize this function and then find out these factors. So, Wi is the relative weight assigned to the ith load ratio. Now, in this case again, we have to optimize these functions. So, optimization means we have to differentiate this S with respect to the partial safety factors gamma i. So, the format of equations if we consider say uh, resistance and dead load plus live load, then obviously there will be three partial safety factors as we had in the last case. Accordingly, if we check the safety format for different other cases, uh, the number of uh, partial safety factors may vary and accordingly we have to differentiate this function and equate it to 0. So, let us consider an example. This example we take it from uh, Ranganathan's book. So, this book you can also refer. So, in this case what we have a load combination dn plus ln and then our objective is to use this LRFD format to find out the optimal uh, set of values. So, this value of gamma r, gamma d and gamma l we have to optimize. And we consider dn to be 1 and then obviously uh, for level 1 reliability analysis we get this uh, nominal uh, resistance as you can see on your screen and where ai is nothing but the ratio of ln and dn for the ith combination. And then obviously, if we use the previous expression, our S function, which is a function of gamma r, gamma d, gamma l, because in this LRFD format, we have three partial safety factors. If we change this equation, obviously, the number of partial safety factor may change. And in that case, this Rn1, that is the level 1 reliability analysis, will have those uh, partial safety factors. So, here you can see on the right hand side, we have these uh, three factors and our objective is to optimize this function. Obviously, we can optimize this function by differentiating this S with respect to the unknowns. In this case, the unknowns are gamma R, gamma D and gamma L. Now, the moment we differentiate that and then uh, we can develop this kind of equations just like in case of least square cow fitting, we did uh, a similar approach here uh, actually is adopted. So, uh, we can uh, differentiate this S with respect to unknowns and the moment we do that we get uh, these type of equations. Obviously, there will be uh, three equations because we have three unknowns, but if you do that uh, uh, and check yourself, two of them uh, will be same and that is how we basically get these uh, two equations. So, when you differentiate S with respect to the first two, they will be same and uh, then uh, 
you can actually derive at these expressions. Now, what we do, we actually use the ratios of ln and dn. So we start with 0 0.25, then 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2. Uh, this is uh, the same example as there in the book. So the target reliability level is 3.5. And then for that, we assign the weights. Uh, we can change these weights according to our need. In this case, we have maximum weight for this ln by dn ratio uh, of 0.5. But ultimately, we can change this according to the designer's need. But the impact of this uh, should uh, be always 1. That means the all weights, if you sum it up, should uh, lead to 100%. So we have now for every combination of ln and dn, we have the gamma r, gamma d, gamma l identified and that you can see on your screen. Now, once we assume the weights, then we can solve uh, the problem and then we can identify all these factors and finally invoke the optimal equations. So, in this case again, uh, we can, uh, for instance, I equal to 1 when L, ln by dn is equal to 0.25, we can find out this uh, expression and then similarly also in all other cases we can identify the nominal resistance and then uh, once we have this, we can uh, solve the equations that we have derived by optimizing the S function. So ultimately we get these are the two equations. Obviously, in this case, we have three unknowns, two equations. So, uh, we assume, uh, say, gamma d, that is the load factor, is, uh, say, 1.2. Uh, we can set it, say, 1.1 or 1.15. So, we set this. The moment we set this, we can uh, reduce this to two equations for two unknowns, as you can see on your screen. And then, ultimately, we can solve these two and we get this gamma r and gamma l. Again, carefully note, gamma r is less than 1, but it is getting very close to 1. So, in this case, uh, we have the value of gamma r is 0 0.9495, while gamma l is 1.829 and gamma d already we have selected as 1.2. So, that is how we actually arrive at the partial safety factors which are optimal, optimal in the sense that uh, under the different ratios of uh, ln by dn, uh, then we optimize these uh, parameters so that the S function we defined earlier is optimized and then we arrive at this uh, set of partial safety factors. So, uh, there was an alternate approach. It was uh, proposed by Baker. Uh, so, in this case, the S function is defined but not in terms of uh, the resistance, but in terms of the probability. So, uh, the similar set of equation you can see uh, with log 10, uh, we use the probability as the measure and then instead of Rn2 and Rn1, we use this and define the um, S function. Obviously, PFI uh, is the failure probability for the ith load ratio, which is ln by dn. And then uh, PFTI is the uh, probability of failure for the ith load ratio. And then uh, once we do that, we can actually optimize just by differentiating this S function again with respect to the unknowns. And then uh, we start with the trial values of partial safety factors uh, in the new code format and then beta i values and corresponding PFI are computed. Then these values are substituted in the above equation and then obviously the moment we do that, we can uh, repeat the process and then find out uh, the values of gamma i. Finally, uh, what we can do, uh, a set of partial factors corresponding to the minimum value of S we can identify and that we can uh, propose as the optimal uh, partial safety factor. So, the same problem, uh, same reliability level, if we mm, uh, use beta as 0.35, then again uh, in the previous case uh, we identified these factors. So, we select a trial value of gamma L as 1.3 and then uh, using the 
prefix values of gamma r and gamma d then uh, we can uh, determine beta for each values of ln and by dn and for each case again we can find out the probability of failure and then uh, uh, we can uh, find out this s equation and then ultimately we can uh, iteratively solve this and find out the optimal safety factors in this case again uh, we use three values of gamma L just to identify the optimal values. So, gamma L is 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 1 and corresponding S values we can identify and from those values we can optimize gamma L and then uh, accordingly we can select the optimal uh, set of partial safety factors. With that, our discussion on optimal safety factor ends here. Thank you very much.